Hello, AB Civics in Action students. This is Mr. McGravy. Uh, I know it's been a while. Uh, it seems like it's been a couple, at least about a month since we've um, come together with a with a episode of Civics in Action with Mr. McGravy. This is the mother of all Civics in Action with Mr. McGravy because we have over ten people on this Google Meet. I am absolutely thrilled. I think for me personally, this is going to be one of the most meaningful, I think, for all of you students. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to present my screen a little bit to kind of have us all get started. Um, Senator DiZoglio, Senator Diana DiZoglio is possibly going to be here, maybe might not, talking about civics in action. Um, she is actually right now in her role as a senator at the State House, and there's some things going on business-wise. So she may pop in, and when she does pop in, we'll kind of stop everything that we're doing, allow her an opportunity to speak, and then we will continue. So I'm just gonna present, and then I'm gonna allow everyone to introduce themselves. All right, okay. So this is a familiar group of people. Uh, this is a group of students from Methuen, Massachusetts, as well as other people that are working with them, including Senator DiZoglio and a few other people. And there is Senator DiZoglio herself uh, on a walk uh, that we're also going to be talking about, which I'm very, very excited about. Um, the main thing that we're going to be doing today is we're going to be looking students, my students, uh, you've seen these 10 questions before from the Democratic Knowledge Project. We also have Michael Blau from the Democratic Knowledge Project, who will also introduce himself in a moment. But these are 10 questions on how to be a change maker. And I was mentioning in the little pregame that I did with the, the Methuen students that whether they know it or not, they are change makers. They are making huge changes right now. Not only that will impact them, but this is gonna impact what they're doing in Methuen for generations upon generations. And there are 10 questions that I'm gonna ask them to answer. We're gonna go in a wide variety um, for this. And um, we're gonna, you know, there's a little, there's a few things that we're gonna go and some of them will chime in more than others, which is perfectly fine. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am gonna allow everyone to introduce themselves. Um, Jessica, I think it would be great if you could introduce yourself first, just talk about um, your connection to the students, your connection to Senator DiZoglio on the project and the organization that you're part of, which I uh, have been doing some research on and is really sounds very, very interesting. So Jessica, welcome to Civics in Action. Thank you so much for having me. So I am Jessica Brennis. I am the Director of New Business Development for Inspirational Ones. We are the lead physical agent in helping develop this Methuen Youth and Community Center in Methuen. Um, I have had the privilege of meeting these wonderful youth that is on here now, as well as about five others that are part of the My Voice Advisory Group. Um, and I'm very excited to be led by them as our advisory group on what the Youth Innovation Center really is going to be. That sounds great, Jessica. I can't wait to talk to everyone about this. This is great. And what you're saying about putting everything on them and what they're doing um, is very, very exciting. Uh, the next person I'd like to introduce um, himself is is Tom, you are working with Senator DiZoglio. And what I'd like you to do is just a little two-parter before you introduce yourself. Just let my students know where Senator DiZoglio is right now because that is civics in action. And then tell us a little about your role um, and, and some maybe a few things that you can recollect about what's, what's happening with all these wonderful people, Tom. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. And as you were mentioning, the Senator unfortunately couldn't be with us uh, for this because she is actually um, in the process of having a formal session in the Massachusetts Senate. And so a formal session is when the, uh, the legislature um, takes up, you know, bills uh, for formal votes. And so that's probably one of the major aspects of her job. So it's not something that she can miss, unfortunately, but she would absolutely love to be here. And um, so to build on that, I have worked for the Senator for around a year. I am her legislative aide and policy advisor. And 
without a doubt, uh, during the year that I've spent in her office, one of the most amazing things for me to see is the development of this project and just to see how quickly things can get done when the right people and specifically uh, the youth get involved in advocacy. And so that's where things stand. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to answer any additional questions about the project. Thank you very much, Tom. All right. So these wonderful Methuen students, they're the stars of the show where, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm just really excited to meet them. So um, all I'm going to do is just I'm going to come on to you. You can unmute yourself. Just tell us who you are and what grade you're in. Um, and uh, that, that'll be really easy. And then you can all chime in later when we get to the questions. Um, so I'm going to start with um, Calissa. Do you just want to introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Calissa Alba, and I am a freshman at Methuen High School. Excellent. Thank you. Um, Theo, would you like to unmute and introduce yourself, my friend? Yeah. Hi. Uh, my name is Theodore Higginbottom, and I'm a ninth grader at Greater Lawrence Technical School. Excellent. Uh, Johnny, Johnny, nice to see you. Would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Johnny. I'm a junior at Methuen High School. Excellent. And Philip, my friend, would you like to unmute and introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Phil Nugent, and I'm a sophomore at Methuen High School. Excellent. And Matt, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Hi, my name is Matthew Torres, and I'm a sophomore at Methuen High School. Excellent. So my students, you know, not to like, you know, put any pressure on you or anything, but these students are not much older than you. Um, so, you know, when, when, Sometimes when we did the civics project, I, I, you know, we did a little civics project, a little introductory one with Thuin students a couple of weeks ago. And I heard a few things like, I can't, I can't, oh, there's no way people won't listen. Um, I really made a point to have this show to let my students know that, that you, people will listen to you and you can do amazing things like this group of kids uh, and what they're doing. Um, and my last guest, who I'm who I'm thrilled to have on as a representative from the Democratic Knowledge Project, is Michael Blau. And I've invited Michael because Michael is knows quite a bit about the ten questions um, that we've been using in class that we're going to apply to this episode. So, Michael, I'd like you to introduce yourself, and maybe you might want to talk to spend a little bit of time talking about the ten questions. And um, sure. welcome to Civics in Action, Michael. Sure. Well, thanks for having me, Pat. It's always good to to see you and uh, I, I, I salute you and, and your students and especially the students at Methuen. I was just saying, uh, I've been in conversations with uh, uh, Methuen um, teachers for quite a few years now. And uh, we had a meeting with some Methuen teachers and uh, Rep Campbell actually, I think two or three years ago before the civics bill was, uh, was a thing. And um, they were these the, the 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 district of Methuen was was in a similar situation as you are now, Pat, at North Andover, and uh, look what they've done in, the, in the, just a few a few short short years, um, and and just short work with for these these students in particular. So really excited to shine and and let them shine and showcase those uh, those students in their work. But um, I'm Michael Blau. I, I, I'm working at Harvard at the uh, Democratic Knowledge Project. I've been there for about three years and been work doing a lot of work for student-led civics projects in the Commonwealth for the last uh, four years. Um, we have been uh, working with uh, roughly 33 teachers um, this year and a slightly smaller group of teachers and students last year in piloting uh, as uh, uh, Mr. McGrady, I'm sure your students know the, the, the pilot of the Democratic Knowledge Project curriculum, um, Educating for American Democracy. And um, as a really crucial por portion of that curriculum, that year-long curriculum, it kind of culminates in a student-led civics project in, at the end of the year. Um, and so I'm really excited that, that your students are starting to engage with that work now and looking at models now and being able to to um, start reflecting on the 10 questions, which helps guide students through the, 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 the change-making process, through the student-led civics project process uh, this early, because it's, it's never too early to, to, to start. And engaging with these 10 questions in any issue that you care about is really a, a great and useful tool for understanding what it is that you care about, what are, understanding what other stakeholders are, are at play and, and how you can go about addressing change, building allies, Etc. So, just to say a, a few quick words, 
before we give it back over to, to students to see what, what their process was and how they, they went through the, the change making uh, uh, process. The 10 questions really starts with um, uh, your own civic identity and what you care about. And so I think, Pat, your students have already started on that journey this year. Um, but that's where really these, the, the first uh, three essential questions um, uh, of these uh, 10 questions for change makers really kick in. And I see that you have it up on your on your screen yep. there, um, which is great. So obviously first first few questions that really start start to start with are uh, what matters to me and why? How much should I share? And then how do I make it about more than myself? So we start to see in the, in the process of these these questions, and maybe in the similar process, I'm interested to hear with the Methuen students um, what framework they actually use. But there's um, whether you're using an advocacy hourglass or um, the 10 questions for change makers or the six stages for um, student led civics projects that really follow a very similar of line of thinking of starting with self and um, ending with we. How do I build power with others? Um, so then you see uh, we questions, right? Where where do we start? How can we make it easy for others um, and, and engaging for them to join? How do we uh, get wisdom from crowds? What are the downsides of crowds? A really important question, which I, I'm sure that um, students working together in Methuen will have more um, thoughts on. Um, and are you looking for inf a voice? Are you pursuing influence or voice or both? Um, and how do you get from a uh, voice to change? And then finally, how do I um, and how do we get allies? So these questions seem simple. But they actually, there's a whole, a whole lot of research actually at Harvard that's been done over the last five years. And with people from ages really 16 to uh, 29 um, in that, that, that age bracket of how people have made change in their lives and studied actual uh, change maker biographies um, to study how people have gone through their own um, uh, discovery process of what it is they care about and how do they how do they um, uh, actually advocate and work for a broader change at a systems level? So um, these 10 questions are really helpful for the individual, but they're also great group activities to go through and really think about collectively for the collective issues that you have. But I'm really happy that you uh, and the students are engaging with these and um, yeah, really excited to see other models, again, uh, what, the, what the Methuen students have been doing. Great, thank you, Michael, thank you so much. So students, whether you know it or not, um, you know, my students don't have a textbook. Uh, you are the textbook for my student because this, what we're gonna hear about and what you're doing is great. And when we were doing a little pre-talk, I was talking to the Methuen students and I was saying that um, the North Andover Youth Center was built in 2000, 20 years ago, and we never had a um, youth center. And Rick Gorman, who is the director of youth services, who I believe Senator Desoglio is gonna be connecting you all with, he was working with kids, with eighth and ninth graders to get this all done. Those eighth and ninth graders are, they're 34, 35 year olds right now, who's in some instances, kids go to the youth center that they started. So it's just unbelievable what, the, what, you know, what this means. So I think with the 10 questions, I'm gonna go backwards and I'm gonna start with allies. Clearly students and Jessica and Senator DiZoglio and, it, you, you know, you all found each other um, somehow. You all came together. The stars were aligned. So, Jessica, I'm going to allow you to start, and and Tom can chime in, and then of course we can throw it to the students. Jessica, would you mind just telling us how this all came to be? How did everyone reach out to everyone? If if you could just give me a little introduction to this remarkable story. Sure. So. Diane, Senator DiZoglio um, is from Methuen, and Methuen is the only Merrimack Valley city that does not have a youth and rec center for youth. Um, right now, after school, there is not a place for them to go outside of sports, um, and there is not a community center. So this is something that's been really near and dear to the senator's heart, to be able to create a community center. At that point, she was looking at local nonprofits, who's available, who's around, who would be able to really help make this happen. Um, she reached out to our founder, Susan Ledger Ferraro, who's also born and raised from Methuen. Um, so talked to her and they came to the agreement that inspirational ones would be the 
a nonprofit that would be able to come in and really help develop this community center and what this would look like. Um, originally, it was we were looking at places locally where we could start hosting programming after school for the youth. And unfortunately, the pandemic came. Um, so that really put a whole shift and change into what our focus was going to be this year. Um, so we partnered up with Andy Egmont, who is also the lead at the Newberry Court um, Recreation Center, who runs that. And we've reached out to her and she's been a great consultant in helping get this up and running this year. So she helped us develop a survey. We surveyed the youth and the community. Um, we received back 100 responses where these lovely youth were part of those responses. And we started to reach out to the youth of saying, hey, we think as adults that we think we know what youth want and what they need. However, we know that we don't. Um, so to really get a better feel of where do youth want to go after school? What are types of programming that would interest them that they feel like is going to help be a stepping stone to where they want to go after school? after school? Where do they want to go after their career? Do they want to find out what type of career do they want to go in? How do they get to, you, you know, shadow and intern to understand what types of jobs that they would like? So learning that, so we developed this advisory group where they came to the decision of their name, of my voice, and MY standing for Methuen Youth. Um, and really our goal from day one is that this group is going to help lead us as the adults in developing this program. And we have ideas that we will bring to them, but they will be the final decision makers of what happens. Wow, that what a great, that's a great story. And, and I know I'm gonna have the students speak in a little bit. I, I know that, you know, the five of you are, must be, you're so busy at school. And you know, some of you work and extracurricular activities and families. And so for you to add this to your plate speaks a lot about the five of you, but it also, it also makes me have an inkling that this is very, very, very important to you. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of go around and I'm, I'm going to ask a couple questions. I'll, I'll go in a certain order and um, I'd, I'd love you to just come up with some responses to some of these questions, and and the students did, the students all got these questions ahead of time. They actually asked me questions, which I thought was great and helped me, and is going to make this such a better show. Um, okay, so the first question that I'm going to throw it out to the students um, is the the new youth center. You know, it, it it why you know why does it matter to you? I think that's a really good question, and I'm going to start off with Matt in a moment. But Matt, basically, why does this youth center? Why does it mean so much to you? Not only you individually as a teenager, but other kids in your community. So, Matt, why does this matter to you? It matters so much to me because uh, we can bring kids and other youth where they can express their ideas and just like a wholesome place, a place of security where youth can all come and just like be there for one another. And um, for me personally, I know that like the Methuen, this is like going to be like our first youth center. I'm just like so excited for this. And um, yeah. Matt, great answer. And what I love, Matt, is you like did not make it about you. You kind of talked about others, which I think is huge. Philip, so why does this youth center matter to you? And if it's already been said, that's okay. You can repeat things that have already been said. Um, Philip, please let, let, let me know. Why does this matter to you, my friend? Well, this youth center matters to me because I know it has the potential to open many doors to many youths of Methuen. And it personally matters to me because if I would have gotten something like this when I was younger, I would have gotten skills that I wouldn't have gotten in school. Wow. So, Philip, you're thinking of kids that maybe are in elementary school that will have a youth center when it will be built and how it will impact them. Wow, that, that's another great answer, Philip. Thank you. Johnny, same same one to you. Why does this matter to you? I think a youth center matters to me because I think a lot of days, kids my age, um, they don't really have a chance to speak out or like talk at all. Like They don't get opportunities like this to like talk to people their age and have 
adults listen to them. So I think just having a place that's really accepting and kind of um, forces them to kind of like open up and talk to other people is really important. Great. Excellent. 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 I love the different perspectives. And what's great is the five of you are just five completely different students or kids, young adults. And it, you're get, we're getting, we're covering so much area. Calissa, wh why does this matter to you? You're, you're getting involved. Um, you're here, you know, on this, uh, you know, we're obviously going to promote the youth center with this show. You know, why does it matter to you? It matters a lot because similar to what Johnny said, um, having a space where all of us um, who come from like different backgrounds and everything, like a space where everyone can come together and just open up to each other or just feel comfortable around each other. And even having a place where we don't have to feel pressured to be like the perfect student or like the, the best athlete, you know, like just having a place where we're all comfortable and accepting of one another is really important. That's great. Excellent. I also like Jessica said this and you just said it. And, you know, not everyone, you know, athletics is amazing. Our athletics is so great and it, it does so much for so many young adults. But, you know, not everyone is athletic. Not everyone plays sports. There is so much more to people. And we're you know, and Methuen is such a well-balanced community. It's a diverse community. And, and, you know, there's so much going on. And I really think that's an important piece of the puzzle. Um, so Theo, would you like to go and tell us why does this matter to you? Uh, yeah, definitely. So it matters to me because we don't really have a place to go after school. You know, if there's no one home, then you don't really have like people to talk to. It's really just going to be this great accepting place where everyone can just be themselves, have a fun time, hang out and maybe learn some real life skills. So that's why it's really important to me. All right. Well, it's obviously it's super clear why this matters to all of you and, 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 Really, there's, you know, sometimes you would think like people like, oh, well, I, it will be great because I'll have a gym or I'll have a computer, you know, and, and there, again, uh, one of the parts of the curriculum is how do we get from I to we, um, you know, in the DKP curriculum and I didn't hear a lot of eyes being said with all of you. I, I really heard a community um, and, and then that's fantastic. So the next question I'm going to ask you, you know, is probably not as easy of a question. It's a little bit more personal. So please feel free if you want to pass on this. Um, and you can pass on any of these questions, by the way. I want everyone to be comfortable. That's what I do with my students. Um, how much should you share? So what I'm asking you right now is, how have you been involved? In other words, um, have you had to send emails? Have you had to make phone calls? Have you had to speak? Have you had to go on social media? Have you? I know it's the pandemic and we don't really get to make live speeches, but you know, virtual speeches, just how much are you sharing? How, just tell me a little bit about your involvement, be, you know, beyond this and beyond the, in, you know, the survey. Tell me a little bit about how much more you're getting involved and, and how you're, you're kind of sharing things with the public. So Matt, I'm going to stay, I'm going to go with you. Just tell me a little bit about your time and what you've been sharing and, and how you've been working for the Youth Center project. Yeah, I think it's absolutely necessary for everyone to get involved. So, um, we created an Instagram account. We uh, did a Panera fundraiser, Chipotle fundraiser, and we did um, the walk with the senator, which was amazing. And um, I think it's just absolutely important to get everyone involved because um, they can grant new opportunities and new doors. Just like, yeah. And Matt, can I ask you just quickly? And I'm gonna I'm gonna go to Philip next. Matt, was it hard to get other kids? to come work or, or do this? Like, is, is it hard to get kids motivated or did you find that most kids were so open and really wanted to get involved? At first, it was a bit difficult to convince some of my friends because we had this youth night um, last week and yeah, it was great. Thank you, Jess. <laughs> and, um, at first it was very difficult, but then we created the fundraiser, we created an Instagram and then that's when the buzz started happening. And then that's oh. when kids were like, oh, this is really interesting. I should check this out. And yeah. Creating a buzz. I love that. That's really cool. Thank you, Matt. So Philip, you know, sharing like, you know, I know some of it's going to be similar to what Matt's been going through, but how have you got involved? How, you know, how, how are some, what are some things that you've done above and beyond this survey? Well, I've gotten involved into this um, youth center by like just advocating for it. And just talking about it to my friends and family. And I've also spoken at the school committee, which 
was very like big for this. So Philip, you had, so you spoke at the school committee, um, the Methuen school committee. Um, and was this, was this virtual Philip or this was obviously virtual? Oh no, it was in person. In person. And when, yeah. when was, when was this Philip? Do you, uh, timeline wise? Um, couple of months ago. A couple of months ago. So you literally spoke live. I'm sure that the show was being televised throughout Methuen. Um, wow. Th that is, that's huge. I mean, I know with some of my students, you know, when, when I bring in guests, many of them are very intimidated to speak to guests. So to get up in front of the school committee, wow, that, um, yeah, that's, that's interesting. So Johnny, I know you've probably done a lot of these things. So if you want to talk about new things, how you've put yourself out there, or just comment about any of the things that have been said, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Yeah. So I actually run the Instagram account. Um, I started it and it's been really, it's been a really creative experience for me. I think it's so cool that like, I had, they have so much trust in me to like run an account that that's for the Matthew and my voice. And I get to reach out to so many people and I get to see like new followers. I get to promote it on my own account. And I see so many of the people in the group, like reposting our stuff and like, they're so excited to repost it. And it's super cool to just see all like the activity that happens in the account, because who would have known that like I can start an account and people would like want to follow and want to see our stuff. So I think it's wow. really cool. And it's, it's really helped me kind of like connect closer with the project. So Johnny, I'm going to ask you a couple quick follow-ups if you don't mind, because yeah. you did say, you know, you, it was, you know, you were the one that is in control of it. H how many followers do you have at this point? I think we probably have like around 60. And good. to me, that's cool. Cause we started at zero. So 60 yeah. is good for yep. me. That's great. And all you need is a big share with someone and it's a whole new ball yeah. game. Uh, and that's great. And, and, and just my backup to that, Johnny, is, you know, social media, obviously, you know, isn't always seen as the most positive thing, especially, you know, with kids, your generation and my students. But I'm a firm believer that you have to use whatever is out there. So, you know, my students in the spring, they're going to be doing a civic action project where they're going to pick something of interest. Can you just explain to them um, why in this 21st century age, why do you believe social media is so important to making any kind of change in the world, local, yeah. federal, or state? I think that social media can be so negative mm -hmm. and you can get so wrapped up in a bunch of different things. So I think just even seeing like something easy as like, oh, there's a tour job happening. There's stuff like, seeing like oh a fundraiser is happening like that's such a good way to spread information and so when you're seeing so much negative and you see just even a little bit of like positivity from like different groups I think it's so important and it just like I don't know it could get so many like eyes to see yeah. like a new project so yeah that's so that's so great that's so great Johnny I appreciate that and you know whatever you do in the future Johnny you know obviously having this experience for all of you um, is going to be just an amazing thing, a resume builder, whatever you want to call it. Not that's, that's why you're doing it, but um, you know, the news article, everything like that, you're all applying to, you know, college. Um, this is things that are definitely going to work to your advantage. Uh, and that's not why you're doing it, but it's a, it's a good little, it's a good little bonus that you're, you'll be getting out of it. Um, so Calissa, if you would like to tell us, you know, how have you gotten involved? Um, you know, how much of yourself have you shared? Do you just want to share that experience with us? That'd be great. Yeah. Um, so I, um, I also spoke at the school committee meeting and that was really like intimidating, but also really rewarding yeah. um, because like, like standing in front of like a group of adults was really like intimidating and, and nerve wracking. Um, but then like, being able to like see their faces and like you can really tell that they understood and wanted to like hear what I was saying um so like after speaking in front of them it felt I was like sat back and I was like <sighs> like that was really cool I'm really proud of myself yeah. and and um it was yeah it, just, it was awesome it, it is cool I mean I mean I can think about you know the first time I ever got involved with school committee meeting you know I was in my mid to late 30s and just to kind of let my students know like 
testifying at the school committee. It's not like, you know, obviously I'm, I'm guessing you read a statement, but just correct me if I'm wrong. Did you have to answer their questions? No. So you just read a statement. So you just read a statement, but still you had to read it and you had to present yourself in front of, you know, a board of government, which is kind of intimidating. Um, great. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Theo, do you have any other angles or things that that you've gotten involved in um, and, and, and kind of been sharing some things. I'd love to hear what you have to say, Theo. Uh, yeah, definitely. So something that I did was to raise awareness for a uh, fundraiser, the Panera slash Chipotle fundraiser, was I ended up like emailing uh, my the uh, principal of the school so like we could like kind of send out the flyers to uh, all the kids so everyone would be able to see it. Really like raise awareness about that. And uh, that also raised awareness for our youth night and just kind of who we are. And uh, yeah, that's like probably the biggest thing I've done. Yeah. So obviously getting involved in a fundraiser, emailing principals, trying to get them involved. Again, these are all things that you're going to try to do. So um, what I'm going to do now is, you know, I, I'm going to just kind of I'm going to change it a little bit. And I, I've heard some great things. I've heard um, I've heard like talking about a youth night. I've heard about Panera. Um, I've heard about fundraising. I've heard about this. I've heard about this walk. Um, and I would love, um, does, does anyone want to tell us, a, you know what, Theo, since you emailed the principal about it, could you tell us a little bit about the, is it Panera fundraiser? Could you just tell us a little bit about what that was, if you don't mind? Uh, yeah, sure thing. So pretty much what the Panera fundraiser was, was I believe it was the ninth, ninth or eighth, one of the two where anyone who ate there from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., uh, part of the money would go to us. So I think it was after, like, $60 were made or something. I think we got, like, 20 25% of the profits, something like that, some certain number like that. And, and uh, that's what it was for Panera, and it was also like that for Chipotle. Great. And, and, and obviously that goes into the money that's being raised for the youth center. Oh, that that's great. Um, again... I, now, I believe just by raising hands, how many people went on the walk? Did anyone go on the walk? All right. So I, I think Senator DeZoglio was the only one on the walk or possibly. So Jessica or Tom, if you could chime in, either one of you, could you tell us a little bit about this walk, please? And then we can come back to the students. Either one of you can take it. Whoever wants to take it. Sure. Yeah, yeah go ahead, Jessica. All right, Tom, feel free to chime in whatever I might miss. Will do, so, will do. The senator did a march across Massachusetts where she started out in Western Mass and ended um, in Salisbury. She had, she did, it was 159 miles um, that she walked across Massachusetts. And during that time, what we were also able to do is not only was she continuously posting and we were posting on social media so everyone could see where she was and how she was doing, um, the Merrimack Valley Magazine did a whole introduction, her day one, they were great, they went out there to really help promote it. But we also had an app um, that we worked with MoveSpring and everyone, the youth was able to get them and their friends to join this app. So everyone got to virtually walk with the senator and we could track where the senator was in her miles and everyone's steps accounted for where they could be if they were on the walk with her. So we as a community were with her virtually through you know our own exercise and health and wellness while she was actually the one walking across Massachusetts. And, and in the meantime, news reports, social media reports, you're getting Correct. that message out about all that you're doing. Yes. Uh, because I mean, obviously, you know, I've, I've known Senator DiZoglio for a while and um, you know, I knew a little bit about this youth center. I didn't know a heck of a lot, but I would say that the walk and the article on the Tribune, that's what got me hooked yes. to this story. Uh, and, and, and for all of you, um, you know, all the students, not only is this going to be shown to my 116 wonderful civic students, um, this is something shareable that all of you are going to get a copy of and you can share it. You know, you know, Johnny, you could put it on the Instagram or whatever. It's also going to be on the North Andover Cam cable um, news program. So lots of people are going to be seeing this show and many, many people are going to share it. I'm sure Senator DiZoglio will put it in hers and 
um, state representative Wynn and state Re representative Minacucci and lots of other allies um, that we have. Uh, thank you very much, Jessica. That's just so cool. Tom, would you like to chime in anything in terms of the senator's involvement with the walk or any insight of, you know, you were obviously communicating with her and on the play by play. And do you know a little bit about the distance and how far she went and, and things like that? Uh, that would be great. Yeah, so I I think one thing that I would just want to point out about the entire uh, ordeal, whether it's, you know, the uh, the community center or the walk in general is just how amazing it is, how quickly all of it came together. And so what I would like to point out is that, especially during COVID-19 and everything that's been going on, our office, and, and, you know, I think I can speak to this a little bit, has been just overloaded with so many different things getting thrown at us all at once. And, and for the Senator to dedicate so much of her time to this walk and, you know, make so much progress on this front just speaks volumes to the amazing work that all of the youth have done, specifically the youth on this call and then the other youth that we're working with. And so I just wanted to point out that with you know proper advocacy and knowledge and you know a lot can get done uh with as we were talking about before the right partnerships and so i think jessica pretty much hit the nail on the head in terms of the walk you know obviously it was you know a very long one 159 miles she really didn't take a break any of the days and uh she was able to raise a lot of funds for the youth center uh during that time roughly one hundred thirty thousand dollars, which is uh, a large sum of money. Um, and then in coordination with that fundraising with the walk, uh, we've also been able to secure additional funding through the state budget, uh, which is going to really go a long way in terms of funding uh, necessary um, improvements on the building, uh, as well as programming that um, we're hoping to see get started soon. And so, you know, I, I definitely can speak, you know, further to maybe more specific things, but I think that, you know, it's, uh, it's important to highlight again, just the amazing work that the youth have done and that it's, it's really come a long way in such a short amount of time. That's great. And, you know, and, and um, Tom and Jessica, just one more quick question and we're going to come back to this, to the students. Uh, it, you know, today's obviously December 21st, 2020. When was the seed first planted? Like, when did this first process, like, I know it's hard to pinpoint. When when would you say is the timetable of when it began? Uh, the walk or the... Oh, I mean, the, 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 the whole idea of a youth center, sorry. Jessica, do you know exactly when it was spawned, the initial idea? It started about a year ago give or take the whole idea with the initial earmark funds that the Senator advocated for um, with the state. And that was really kind of the kickoff of initial funds to be able to start with this concept. And again, you know, that was about January, things started to evolve and then the pandemic. So then we did a little shifting again. So, um, but definitely like Tom said, you know, the Senator has been a huge advocate and without her really, you know, getting state funds, being able to speak into a variety of unbelievable donors that really donated through that March. Um, we were able to raise that $130,000 and we were able to have the youth speak at the school committee. And that's how we were able to talk to them and get the approval and being able to open up at the Pleasant Valley School in Methuen. So, everything has happened really quickly over these last few months which is so amazing um so we're excited to see what this next year is going to bring well one hundred and thirty thousand in a less than a year during a pandemic um that's amazing i mean that's just unbelievable uh that that's very very impressive uh okay so students um the other thing that i want you know one thing that's in the questions is are you pers pursuing voice or change like are kids getting involved because they just want to hear themselves on social media or do they really want to change? I, I don't think anyone would challenge any of you. This is not about your voice. This is about change. And that's why I said at the beginning of the, uh, the beginning of it, you are change makers. You are getting involved. Now, the one thing about being a change maker is, you know, it's really hard to get other people involved to join you. It's really, really hard. I mean, you know, kids your age, they're doing so many different things and, you know, oh, hey, you want to come and join me on this? You know, it's, it's tough. 
So my, this is a two-parter. Number one, have you tried to get people to join you? And the second part is, how's that going? Like, how's it going? Like, you know, it, has it been successful? Are you getting people to join you? Is it tough some days? Are you like, oh man, I wish more people would join me. I'd love to hear just about you, the whole process of getting other people to join you, because clearly five remarkable young people is great, but it's got to be a lot more than that. So Matt, do you just want to tell us a little bit about getting people to join you um, besides coming to dinners and things like that and fundraisers? I'd love to hear what you had to say, Matt. Yeah, absolutely. So um, so Johnny's Instagram account, um, there were some other two advisory members who created this flyer and um, it was advertising our youth night. And where you can uh, invite like the community of the youth and just like um, send it out to all your friends, to people who want to join so they could be like a part of this as well. And so the youth night happened last Thursday and I think we got around like eight people, I think eight people. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. And um, yeah, that's great. And that We're planning to have another meeting in January. I'm pretty sure. Excellent. Thank you. So, Philip, how about you? Have you been reaching out to your friends? Have you been reaching out to people in your classes? Like, how's that going, getting people to join join the fight? Well, it's been going good, honestly. But, like, I do agree that, like, not many kids are, like, that interested in this, which is, like, disheartening. But, like, at the same time, like, there's still a lot of kids that are. So, Philip, you know, obviously it's hard to pick a person's brain, but why do you think why do you think um, some kids aren't into it? Do you just think they're busy? Do you think they don't have the time? Do you have an answer to that? I feel like times like these, like kids are like not really that motivated to do anything mm. like that, like kind of contributes to this. All right. Good. I, I think the time is huge. So, so Johnny, definitely, uh, I'm going to ask you about how you got people to join. But Johnny, could you just talk about uh, the Instagram? How could my students follow? How can my? Because I'd love my students to be followers and get involved. So, if you could just big, you know, shout out to your to your Instagram, you know, give a plug, and then talk about getting people to join you, please. Yeah, of course, I'll give myself a little shout out. So, yes. the username on our Instagram is at Methuen Youth Voices. So you can follow us there. But um, I remember I was actually doing a project in history and we were kind of talking about it. And my history class ends um, kind of in the middle of the year. And a lot of people were saying when we were kind of picking um, a project. They were like, oh, well, no one's really going to continue this project outside of school. And I that kind of like hurt me a little because I was like, people like really don't care about issues in Methuen. And so then my history teacher actually brought up how like that's kind of what we talk about in the youth group. And so from there, I kind of was like, we should have like a little group that we have from for people who want to join outside. And so I posted it on like our classroom stream page. So people got to see it. And even just asking my friends, I said, like, I know you guys are busy, but just come join. You won't be forced to talk. But we have like a really accepting environment. And my friends who even don't even like to talk and don't really like to show their faces on camera, like they felt so comfortable that they like talked a lot more than they thought they would. So it was great to see them do that. That's great. That's fantastic. And Johnny, I hope I can get you some more followers. I'm definitely <laughs> going to try to make that happen for you with my students. I have 116, but uh, you know, I, I think that's huge. Now, Calissa, do you want to talk a little bit about um, people joining you or, um, it seems like you're going in and out. So I didn't know if you had a bandwidth issue. We can come back. To oh, yeah, go ahead, Calissa. Sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah, I'm having a little bit of connection issues. Um, okay. But that's why my camera's off. Um, sure. But, um, yeah, kind of like how Philip said, the motivation piece, um, just because I think, you know, the whole pandemic had a huge effect on all of us. Um. But like, you'll see like the kids who want to, who are interested in this and want to like be a part of change in their community, they're definitely gonna be the ones to come forward and just um, be on the forefront and like really be interested in helping and stuff. Um, that's, yeah. yeah. That's great. And you know, obviously, you know, it's, it's hard because you all have, you all, you know, you all have this vision and not everyone is vision oriented not everyone has that 
ability to do vision. You you have a vision. You all see it through the stages. And some people, and there are a lot of adults like this, not just kids your age. They just want to see the end product. I want to just go to the youth center and start lifting weights and start playing hoops and using the computers. And they have no idea of the journey. So I think that's a huge piece of it. Um, Theo, my friend, how you know? Are you reaching out? How are you getting people like your friends? How are you getting people involved? Uh, yeah. So I uh, I've just been texting some friends who I think would kind of be interested in this sort of thing. Uh, unfortunately, uh, like none of them were able to go to the first youth meeting because uh, they all had like stuff going on and they've been very busy. But I've been you know texting friends. Uh, that flyer that I uh, sent out to that the principal sent out to all the kids. Uh, that's another way because you know it had all of our information for the youth night on there. And uh, yeah, I think it's just also like what Philip and Phil said. You know, people just haven't wanted me wanting to do it because you know they're busy with school or they've just been feeling really demotivated. Wow. I mean, so one positive about having so many people on the talk is it, the 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 it, it's just it, it's so great just to hear all these perspectives. The negative is. We're going on 420 and, you know, and uh, so the time is of the essence and it's going by really fast. So I'm going to kind of throw a final question to you. And I, I think it's a really good one. You all seem like very reflective people. Uh, and I will start with Matt. Uh, actually, you know, I think I'm going to start with Theo for this one and then we'll have Matt go at the end just to kind of switch it up if that's OK. So it's a two parter. Um, the first one is what have you learned about yourself since you've been involved with this? project that's the first part what have you learned about yourself and secondly what advice do you have to my 116 eighth grade students who are going to be watching this that are going to be doing a project in may where they're going to need to get involved and they're going many of them are going to be very negative and many of them are going to be like i can't do this no one's going to listen to me um a piece of advice because I think that advice is going to be so much more meaningful coming from you than from coming from me or an adult because you're all, you're all doing it. You're all doing it. It's 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 just it it, it they the, the kids are going to freak out about this. They really really are. Okay. So, <clears throat> Theo, what have you learned about yourself or what have you learned period and what advice do you have for students that really need some help? <laughs> so, I've learned a lot uh, just about myself and just this, who I am, like, in general. You know, I've really learned, like, I can really do, like, anything I set my mind to, you know. I, like, when I first joined, you know, this was, like, pretty much nothing. We hadn't done, like, any fundraisers, any anything. We pretty much just had a name. And from there to getting a building, getting a name, getting people involved, getting fundraisers going, you know, it's really proved a lot to myself that, like, I can really do, like, anything I set my mind to. And we all can really if we set our mind to Great. And, and what any any advice for my kiddos? Uh, yeah. So some advice I have would be, uh, you know, don't second guess yourself. That's something I do a lot. Don't second guess yourself. Uh, trust in your judgment and just do your best, and everything's gonna be just fine. And you know, uh, just talk to those closest to you for advice. Great, great advice. Great advice. All right, Calissa, what have you learned about Calissa throughout all of this? And what advice do you have for my students um, who may not be quite as confident as all of you are? Um, so I've learned, I've learned it's like, I don't have to be like a person in power to be able to create change. Hmm. Um, and although that is, it's going to be a lot much more work. It's going to be much more work. Um, but just having a group of people who are as like focused on this issue as I am, it was really like inspiring. Um, and I I'm someone that, sorry, no, I'm, go someone, ahead. I'm someone that doesn't like to ask for help a lot. Um, and this definitely showed me that, I can be independent while also needing to, you know, ask for help sometimes. Um, great. Wow. That's great stuff. Great stuff. How about advice? You've already kind of given my kids advice, but how about a little advice just to kind of get those kids pumped up? Um, I feel like it's a lot of it is like mindset. It's like if you have a closed mind and you're like, oh, I'm never going to be able to do this. I'm never going to get it done. Um, it's going to like reflect on your worth. Your, uh, excuse me.
Um, Oh no, I hope I'm not having issues. I, I can hear you. You just said issues. Why don't you uh, finish okay. your statement? We, there was like a five second pause. Okay. Um, it's, it's your, your mindset. And if you have a negative mindset, um, it's really going to affect how you're working. Great. Um, Great. And I, I love the first part of your comment when you said you don't have to be, you know, like this politician or this person in power to make change. Um, that's a really profound statement. And, and I think that's one of the reasons why Massachusetts is dedicating a year of the curriculum to civics for eighth graders and the civics action project. So thank you. All right, Johnny, tell us a little bit about what, what, what has Johnny learned about, what have you learned about yourself and some advice from my students? The, by the way, the social media advice, that was great. That was awesome, but something else. So if you want to take that on, I'd appreciate that, Johnny. Thank you. Yeah, I've kind of learned about myself that I don't really have to change due to the environment. Um, I think that from this group, I, I can kind of see like we all bring something to the table and we all have one goal in common. And it's just to have this project kind of work out and try our best. And so I think that not putting too much pressure on myself to be like the perfect leader, to be the perfect person all the time has definitely helped me. And this group has kind of made it made me see like, I can just be myself and put what I know that I'm good at, like for everyone. Great and thing. Yeah. The advice I have is just the worst thing that someone can say to you is no. And then you just learn from that experience. And I think that even if you have an idea and it just doesn't work out, you can use that to learn to go a different path to have a new idea. So I love thinking about that when I have ideas and just to not be afraid of saying what you want to say. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, Philip, what, what, Philip, what have you learned about yourself, my friend? And give me some advice to um, my students, please. Well, I've, I have learned that I have a voice. And like, that sounds like really cliche, but like, I've like found that within myself because I've always been like very quiet and like, just like in the background, but, like with this, it helps, helps me like speak up more. And my advice is to not be afraid to speak up. Yeah, that's great. Great piece of advice. Okay, Matt, you kicked it all off with the students. You're going to wrap it up. So let's share with me what has Matt learned about himself and um, some advice. Awesome. So um, what I've learned is that um, take every obstacle in your life as a challenge because I remember the first school committee meeting. I did not speak. I was extremely nervous. I had mm -hmm. um, everything written down. I was like, you know what? No, maybe next time. And then <laughs> after, and I was like, um, I had like the biggest guilt of regret. It was like, I should have spoke. I should have done that. I spoke with Marissa and Jess and I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to take this as an opportunity to learn and grow and take every wow. opportunity as a challenge. And yeah, well, that's, that's great. my advice. Yeah. That, that's great advice. So we're getting close to the end. There, there are a couple more things I want to do, but, but, you know, just being as someone who's I've dedicated, you know, two to three years of my life to teaching this new curriculum at the democratic knowledge project, which like you are like, you are totally what, I want um, with this program with my students. Uh, it's just it's it's very moving for all you know for for me to hear this coming from all of you, and can I can only imagine that Michael is going through something very similar right now. And there's no doubt that you know DKP Harvard they love Absolutely. this stuff. So Michael, just give me some impressions. Um, you know you've been working years and years on this curriculum. Just I think you're seeing the ten questions come alive right in front of you. Just share with me some impressions. How are you feeling right now about the curriculum and, and what these kids are doing and, 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 and how they're expressing themselves like this? I'd, I'd love to just hear what your impressions. Yeah, well, thanks, Pat. You know, it's, it's hard not to feel a little bit proud at, at the, the manifestation of the student-led civics curriculum uh, coming, coming to be. Uh, and again, like I think I, I mentioned at the, at the outset, I started having conversations around the importance of eighth grade civics and student-led civics projects about four or five years ago with um, partners at Generation Citizen and Boston Public Schools and some key um, uh, house members like Rep Campbell and Senator Chandler and, and the, 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 the civics curriculum, the eighth grade curriculum, the new standards that came out and the, and the student-led civics project legislation and the, and the, uh, the funding for uh, 
the Students uh, uh, Civics Trust Fund, um, all of those things are manifesting in incredibly powerful, meaningful projects like this that are going to have long lasting impact. But just listening to students, the, in, the you know, the, the personal um, changes that are happening, the personal views that are developing, the capacities that are developing here, those are all goals of ours at, at the DKP. And, um, you know, broadly what, what you want to see in a, in a healthy functioning uh, or proving uh, a provenly healthy uh, democracy. And so it's really hard not to be almost overwhelmed with some some pride with with young people working on projects like this and some hope for the future of what um, our common uh, democratic process might look like if we're able to uh, take what we what we really value and what we really care about and bring that to a a we perspective and allow that to move forward. And one other thing I just wanted to say, and I heard a couple of students say this out loud, but you're never too young to be a change maker. I know that a number of you said that, but it's also really important to have a historical perspective on that too. I, I also mentioned at the beginning, we did a lot of research on the 10 questions on specific change makers um, in the civil rights era um, and in the founding generation. Um, and a lot of those folks that you know of as change makers and think of as change makers started being that way and doing this work when they were your age. I mean, it's really people like John Lewis, for example, who is one of the people that helped, uh, you know, his life narrative helped form this, these, these 10 questions and the, and the, the project for, for student led civics projects. Um, when he started the student nonviolent coordinating committee, he followed a lot of these same same questions at a very similar age. Um, you know, people in the founding generation. It's it's people forget how young people like Alexander Hamilton were when they when they started, um, it, you know, building out the U.S. Treasury Department. Um, so you're you're never too young. Yes, and it really starts right now. And a lot of you are already on that path. Um, and if you, you keep with it and keep using these, these habits of mind and, uh, and dispositions, you're really well on your way in your 20s and 30s to have a huge impact on our, our society. And we'll all be the beneficiaries of that. Great. Thank you, Michael, very much. Thank you. That was great. All right. So Jessica and Tom, we're going to uh, we're going to we're wrapping this show up. And my goal was to make this all about the students. And I mean, talk about student centered. This has been unbelievable. I mean, it's been so great. I know that I had heard some rumblings that you were all nervous, but I, I, I did not see any nervousness whatsoever. I saw confidence. I saw people being well-spoken and uh, you should all be very, very proud of yourselves. You're, you're amazing spokespeople. Uh, and Senator DiZoglio has got some business, but I know when she sees this, she is going to be so blown away um, what you all said. She, I mean, I know her very, very well. So Jessica and Tom, just quick little thing as we wrap things up. How can people help? How can people get involved? How can people donate? Let me give you the forum, and I'll try to send this to as many people as possible. How can we help? I love that question. Thank you for asking that. Of course. So... It, right now, it's following us, inspirationalones.org. You can go right onto our website for donations. You can also follow us on Facebook, Inspirational Ones. Um, Senator Diana DiZoglio, you can follow her as well. Um, and, of course, I think one of the most important things is follow our youth on our Instagram that Johnny gave earlier. That is really the key. Follow us there. That is led by the youth. Facebook, yes, it's led by us with, you know, inspired from whatever the youth does on Instagram. We put on um, Facebook. However, really, really just follow us, inspirationones.org. And my biggest thing is get on that Instagram and see what the youth are up to. Great. Tom, you want to chime in on anything else? Or do you think Jessica covered all the, all the buzz, all the PR? Well, as always, I think Jessica hit the nail on the head. Um, definitely did a great job with the with the PR, but yeah, um, just to, I think, build on a little bit what Jessica was saying, obviously, um, I think the best way would be, uh, through social media, you know, contacting, whether it's the Senator or, uh, following the youth, um, on their various Instagram and social media handles, uh, that, that would really just be the best way to get involved, just continue to spread the word and to be active in that regard. Um, 
I would also say that you could email our office, but I think that that is a, a little bit uh, outdated for some of the youth. So <laughs> All right. I think the best, the best uh, method for any youth interested in getting involved would be the Instagram or Great. You know, uh, the social media handles. So Great. Well, I'm going to share this with as many people. And, 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 and Johnny, I'm going to make this an assignment. All 116 of my students, they're going to have to go on your Instagram and they're going to have to read about it and learn about it. So hopefully I can get you at least another 100. I Let hope, them know the DMs more. are always open. I'll talk to yes. them forever. And, and speaking of talking, um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to put any pressure on you live on camera, but I would love if the five of you could come on a Google Meet with actual live North Andover students um, and, you know, I'll let you think about it and reflect on it. But I think um, I think that the five of you can teach them a heck of a lot than I can um, in this avenue, which is great. I mean, you think about when I was in eighth grade, I was definitely not involved um, like all of you were. So um, this is great. So uh, students, this is where we went a little bit over the hour. But I tell you, this this has definitely been one of the best episodes that we've done. Um, I love the big group. I loved everything that was said. And um, it's just, it's been great. It's my pleasure. So uh, students, you will definitely be seeing this in 2021 and we will be doing a lot of fun things. And I don't think we've heard the last of this group of people uh, in, in our civics classroom and in, in, in the world. So I am going to say sign off. I'm going to say happy new year to everyone and I'm going to stop recording and thank you.